Uh, welcome to our Wednesday segment from the Kellyanne Dolan Memorial Fund, Shining a Light, where we kind of flip the script and we have a nice conversation with uh, one of our friends from the community that has long been involved with the fund and a great supporter. So this morning, I'd like to welcome my friend, Jen Lawn. How you doing, Jen? Hi, good, how are you? Great, great. Nice to see you on this gorgeous summer day out. It is amazing out. I know. It is amazing. Hoping, hoping it's gonna stay that way. It's been nice to get out for these early jogs with cool breezes. So mm -hmm. thanks for taking the time um, this morning. Um, Jen, uh, we'd love to hear a little bit about your business, JL Original Designs. Well, we are a full service um, design and planning company for all events. Um, we get to do a lot. We, we specialize in graphics and florals. So um, right now we're kind of quiet, but um, we will be um, getting back to work very shortly. Uh, it looks like our first event start at the end of August. So wow, we're excited. We got a little bonus this year. Uh, we got a quiet summer. So uh, my crew, my staff and I are gonna take full advantage of that. So by the time the kids go back to school, we go back to work. That's incredible. And it's great to hear that there's events that are being scheduled in, in August. Yes. Now, no, no surprise to our followers. We are in the middle of uh, a pandemic and it's not business as usual for, mm -hmm. for anyone. And we're all trying to figure out, you know, how we pivot and adapt and continue on in the work that we do. So tell me a little bit about, I, I can imagine that the wedding and event business has been just about as hard as hit as the food service industry. Yes, um, complete halt. Um, I mean, we, we had some elopements, um, some brides who, um, you know, they've been planning their wedding for 18 to, you know, 12 to 18 months, and they really want their date. So they went ahead and got married, um, just intimate elopements, um, and then they'll party next year on the same date or around the same date. Um, but other than that, um, any social event, delayed, rescheduled, whatever, completely gone for since March. And um, we'll see, we're gonna come, we're starting back small. Um, Pennsylvania is very slower than most states. Um, we're still only up to 25 and no wow. food service. So you, venues can't serve food yet in yellow phase. They can't do that until green phase. So it's hopefully, fingers crossed, um, we see green phase come and we see that little pickup, but I don't think things will be normal until next year. Like yeah. your normal um, 20, you know, 200 to 250 wedding or, or any social event for right now. Um, they're small, if not, if there is any of them, they're small and very intimate and private. Yeah. So what are you doing behind the scenes? I can imagine you've got um, a team of folks that you work with and you know, you've been seeing during the pandemic featured on TV, kind of these, as you mentioned, these couples that have put so much into it mm -hmm. um, and have come up with just like these creative twists. Um, and maybe in some ways for them, you always hear, well, geez, I don't even remember what my day was about. I don't even remember talking to so-and-so. Um, so maybe do you think it's gonna be a trend in um, doing these kind of quiet, intimate, and then just having this great, you know, party down the line. Believe it or not, before COVID started, we started to see that trend. We were calling them micro weddings. Um, we started seeing that, with especially the wedding industry. I mean, event in the the social event side, um, depending on what you're what you're socializing with, um, if it's a nonprofit or a corporate, whatever, that they always seem huge. Um, and appropriate the size depending on the organization. But we actually started seeing the weddings trend to like a micro wedding as of the end of last year. So it, it was kind of funny. Um, the only people that were really affected were the ones who were planning big weddings. Yeah, sure. So, um, but you know, they took it in stride because they know it wasn't something they control or somebody or all the vendors control. And, um, you know, they just worked with all their vendors and their venues and picked a new date and, postponed everything. Sure. Okay. So what, you know, with all of these changes, 
you know, the photos on your website are just exquisite with <laughs> you know, just the floral arrangements, you know, the table settings. What's this August um, event? You know, what, how's it going to look different? What has this couple decided to do? They're keeping all the same style. Um, they just downsized their wedding party, like their, their wedding guests. Um, they went to more strictly family. And um, it's just a little bit more quiet, a little bit, you know, calmer. Um, it won't be as elaborate as having your 100 guests because you still can't have 100 yet. So until we get green, green puts you up to 250 outside. And they want you to be um, roughly about between 100 and 125 inside, depending on the occupancy and there's all that good jazz. But we're leaving it up to the venues because the venues have to have that down to a pet so they don't have any problems. And then it, and then it comes down to us to um, help facilitate that with our clients. Gotcha. And when, when food service, you know, comes back um, within, you know, the purview of being allowed, my guess is there's going to be all sorts of regulations on what can be served and how it can be done and all of that. They are feverishly trying to figure all that out. Yeah. Um, they're trying to get it back to normal as possible um, with certain things that they have to be careful of. Like, you know, um, try not to have too many self-serving things to, to, you know, reduce the many contacts yeah, in the yeah. room. Um, venues and restaurants are still trying to figure all that out. I mean, there's so many things that you don't think about until you start to go through your daily routine and realize mm, that may not work. So um, they think about the majority of it. They have plans in, but then it comes down to your, you know, it's like having a dry run. Like you have a soft opening to see how it all works. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then and then you realize there's some areas that still need some TLC. So um, I think it's a work in progress. Uh, the state is trying to roll out, um, is, you know, think of everything. And um, I mean, it's going to be up to the venues to really hone in on that. And then for us, for my crew, um, we come in to decorate. We're usually the only ones in the room. So that's a good thing. And if we're outside, we're usually the ones, you know, we set up all prior before everything happens. And then we break down after the fact. So um, as long as we don't have to stay there and be the day of coordination was the only service that would yeah. be around everybody. Um, we should be pretty good. Uh, we have masks. We have hand sanitizer. We are ready to go. Uh, hand washing is like, you know, every 10 minutes <laughs> to make sure. But um, I think it'll be fine. I mean, we deliver flowers. I mean, they could, that's easy. We can place them and go. We don't really have to put it in anybody's hand or be in anybody's face. Um, the restaurants and the venues definitely have their work cut out for them, trying to keep that distance and um, social distancing all across the restaurant and how they serve their food. Um, they're leaning towards just um, primarily getting everybody to do a sit-down meal. So it's coming right out of the kitchen, right onto the table, um, keeping it as less hands touching everything. And I think we'll be okay. Yeah, so no more of the, I was thinking, you know, you're looking at a lot of the restaurants that have been open for curbside and takeout, and they've really worked over the weeks to tweak this art mm -hmm. of contactless <laughs> delivery. Everybody. So I was just thinking, could you know, in a, a wedding or an event, you know, do stations where you know, almost like, um, you know, this could be a good transition in in talking to you about the Kellyanne Dolan Memorial Fund too yeah. and, and some of our events um, at this point. So you've been involved. Tell us, tell us about your, your journey with the Kellyanne Dolan Memorial Fund, your role, why um, it's an organization that you've really committed to um, and stayed involved for many, many years. Yeah. Um, so I've been involved for almost 17 years. I started out as just attending events um, and then, you know, being a, do, uh, a donor um, and then being a sponsor. And then I came on board on staff um, for a short time to um, help in certain areas. And as um, our, the founder, Peggy, retired, help her out through that process. And as the new ED came on, um, 
get her set up. And then I came off staff because I was still running my company. Um, and then shortly after that, I came on, I came onto the board. So I've been involved. Um, this mission means a ton to me. I mean, I have three kids, three teenagers, um, and they've had their share of fun. Um, but nothing compares to what Peggy's daughters have gone through. Um, mm -hmm. And this, I am all about family and kids. So this is right into, this is right into my heart where I want to be um, and where I want to help and where I can help out the most. So I enjoy it. I, I am a huge advocate for this mission. And um, I look forward to many, many years, no matter what I do, always be involved somehow. Yeah, we're super lucky and grateful um, to have you. Um, I think, you know, your guidance and leadership, you know, during this pandemic, we've all had to, you know, think on our toes and, and, and figure out, you know, how are we going to pivot and operate and be able to, you know, be able to not only serve um, the families, um, the number of families that we have been in the past, we know through COVID things are spiking because of unemployment rates and all of that. So super, super grateful um, to have you on board. Um, I'm happy to do it. And I, you know, I know, um, I, I feel very privileged, I guess I can say I'm lucky. Um, but I know some family members and I know friends who have gone through situations and, you know, the just the anguish of trying to decide uh, how they go forward. I totally get it. So I see these families and my heart goes out to them, but I just, I'm a person who needs to help. So this is the way I help. This is the way I help. Yeah, I think you live by that example. And, you know, just as, you know, we try to encourage um, serving, especially more than ever now, the whole reason we're doing shining a light. Uh, we know so many of our friends and supporters hard hit and shut down for three months period of time. Um, we encourage shopping local, mm -hmm. using mm -hmm. local businesses for services. And right. the more and more I've been out there in my networking groups asking, you know, what is it? How do you serve? And why do you serve, um, select a particular charity to support? And what I keep hearing over and over again is I want to know, I give local. You know, I'm a small business. I don't want to give to a national. What I love hearing is when I give a contribution, if I sponsor taste or an event or a family for holiday, you are supporting a local family in need. Yeah, and that's true with small business across the board. Small business is all community minded. Who shops there? The community. Who you support? The community. You can give back to the community. It's a yeah. great circle that um, I'm proud to be part of. And I support all small businesses because they're the ones the backbone for every community. Yeah. So what can we do? You know, you're just getting, you know, back up on your feet. You're doing a great job behind the scenes with your team in terms of strategizing um, about how you're op going to operate. What can we do to support um, your business? So we, so I, you know, I'm a huge advocate for small business. So I, um, not too long ago, I did a post um, and people kind of laugh, but then they realized how much it means to a small business. And it's 10 ways to support a business without using money. And um, with small business, you follow them on social media, you like their posts, you share their posts, you comment on their posts, you tag friends who may need that service. Um, Post photos of their product if you use it. Um, tell friends, do a write-up or review. Reviews are huge for a small business. Um, sign up for their newsletter if you love that company and you use them on a regular basis because you know, know what they're kind of coming out with next. And then the biggest thing during this time, as much as everybody needs it, um, send a little love message. Letting them know that you're still watching, you still support them. Um, not just for my company, but several, many companies, restaurants, not just in restaurants, but there are so non-essential companies out there that just had to shut down yeah. and um, 
how to worry about that, uh, how they were going to support their family, whether they were going to get the loans, whether they had the means to make, um, to pay all their bills. So um, even though they may not be out on social media, maybe they're not open, but if you're just letting them know that you support them out in the community, they're more likely to support back into the community once they get up and going and that goes a long way for them. Yeah, it kind of it kind of goes full circle. That's a, a great great list, and I think it's similar, you know, for us being a small charity that's been around for a long time. We really rely on you know others being kind of the ambassadors on the ground to spread the word. Definitely. Um, so great tips. Um, well, I want to thank you today, Jen, um, and wish you. Um, it looks like it's. Uh, it's around the corner. Right. I'm, I'm hopeful we're, we're transitioning. I follow track the numbers pretty closely here in Montgomery County. Um, Montgomery and, County is crazy. I keep yeah. looking at that going, oh, come on. I feel I like they're going to want to put us back in red. <laughs> I tell you, though, when you when you look at yesterday and you're, it's something like nine cases and we've got like feel- four days in a row that we're showing a downward trend, maybe we'll get to get to 14. I hope everybody stays healthy and safe and uh, yes. be careful. That's what's important. So thanks for being our guest today. And Loved it. Thank you. Look forward to seeing you soon. Yep. Have you guys have a great day. You too. Okay. Bye-bye.